Hi, this is a warning up front that this video is a bit off the grid. Right? The views in this video are mine and um, they're not standard. So um, you need to figure out if I'm completely alone or <clears throat> whether my observations match with yours. This is Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, here to talk about tonight's light middleweight fight between Alan Conyers, who knocked down James De La Rosa three times in his last fight uh, on his way to a 10-round win, and Carlos Molina, who took on unbeaten Eris Landy Lara his last fight and looked so good, quite frankly, even though the judges scored the fight a draw, I think most people at ringside thought that Molina won that fight. Now, before I go further, just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. The opinion you should follow should be your own. Let's get off the grid. I'm not a medical doctor, but you know what? If you gamble on boxing, you've got to pretend to be one, right? It's your money. Somebody's got to make some medical assessments of the guys in the ring. Now, um, let me just say, you know, obviously I've not examined any uh, fighter. But I think we all know elite fighters, I'm not going to name names, but we know elite fighters who <clears throat> have suffered different levels of brain injury, right? Uh, there are fighters who have slurred speech, um, you know, might be mild, but you can look at videos of the fighters from five, ten years ago and then compare and contrast them with videos of the fighters today giving interviews and you'll notice that some fighters um, don't quite sound as crisp as they used to. Right? Then you have other fighters, right? I'll, I'll name a name here. Other fighters who started to get knocked out and their knockouts are always all or nothing affairs. In other words, once the guy gets clipped, he cannot operate. It's over. Right? One of the guys is my one of my favorites, Roy Jones. Where Roy, once he got knocked out by Antonio Tarver, you remember he then got knocked out by Glenn Johnson, was on the canvas a very long time. Then when he got knocked down by Danny Green and he got off the canvas, understand, right before the knockdown, Jones was completely lucid. When he got off the canvas, Roy could not, at least did not, throw a punch. And his legs didn't seem to be cooperating with his mental state. Right, he was alert enough to put his hands up, but it was clear his body was not cooperating. I believe once you see something like that, um, I believe that you've got to take that to heart. In Roy Jones' fight since then, I believe that even when he's fighting someone who's lighter hitting, I believe that you always have to consider the possibility that Roy Jones might get knocked out. In other words, as great a fighter as Roy Jones is, and keep in mind, Roy Jones defensively, for years, we didn't even know if he could take a punch because he almost never got hit. Right? As skilled as Roy Jones is, um, you know, I can tell you in his upcoming fight with Dennis Lebedev, I think Roy can win that fight. But even with a talent gap, I have to straddle that play with the possibility of Roy Jones getting knocked out because I realized. When Roy gets hit, even when he's alert, Roy Jones might not be able to continue because his body disconnects from his brain at moments like that, right? Um, in researching this Carlos Molina fight, I came across some very disturbing footage. It's Alan Conyers against James Kirkland. Now, understand... That wasn't that long ago. I know the fight is from maybe 2007, and it's up on YouTube. It's a one-rounder, 
I encourage everyone to go see that video. Right? It's a one rounder, but that's only two fights ago for Alan Conyers. Understand, Conyers, after that fight, took time off. I believe he's only fought twice since that fight. And he got knocked out the fight after that fight. Well, what's interesting in that James Kirkland, Alan Conyers fight is it's clear that Conyers' mind is alert. He actually is, you know, uh, after he gets drilled, he's standing up, he even talks to the referee, right? It's clear that his mind is alert. But when you look at his legs, you understand there is a problem. In other words, guys who get hit on the chin and then the legs just stop cooperating, I think are guys you need to look out for. These weren't flash knockdowns. Conyers' legs stopped cooperating. In other words, he's standing up. He can't even get his legs to cooperate with the rest of his body. Right? To me, that's a neurological response that, quite frankly, is more powerful than the fighter. You know, as a gambler, I would almost rather a fighter just get knocked out, like Ricky Hatton got knocked out by Manny Pacquiao, where the guy just goes to sleep. I'd almost rather that than see Ricky Hatton get hit and then unable to control his legs, unable to control his motor movements, right? When I see that, I make a mental note of it. So the next time that guy who will just say, um, why don't we use the phrase neurologically challenged, right? The next time I see that guy against a technician, who is quick moving and who is going to fight the kind of fight that's going to require my neurologically challenged boxer to actually show quick reflexes and to uh, literally move and pivot quickly, then I'm going to have to go with the other fighter. I like Carlos Molina over Alan Conyers. Molina, quite frankly, um, I know he's had promotional problems. I know he had a layoff in the ring, but he hasn't lost for several years. He still looks cat quick. He uh, throws combinations. He's a very demanding opponent. He is a guy who, a boxing vet, who knows his way around the ring, right? He's going to force Alan Conyers to engage him and fight him and move and do all the demanding things that this sport requires, right? And quite frankly, after seeing the uh, neurological challenge Alan Conyers uh, faced against James Kirkland, I just believe that Conyers, who is much older than Carlos Molina, right? Conyers is 35. I just think that Conyers is toward the end of the road. He has a great punch. He has a great punch. But I'm not sure if I see much else. I like Carlos Molina in this fight. If you're betting big money and you want to straddle on this fight, I would think about straddling it with either uh, Conyers by KO. If you can't get a Conyers by KO straddle option, then I would think about a straddle of the under, right? Because Conyers, at the start of the fight, while Molina, who is a technician, is figuring out the angles, uh, has an outside chance of catching Molina. But I expect Molina to dominate. If I were making one bet on this fight, it would be on Carlos Molina to win the fight. Molina just has the better technique. Quite frankly, Molina is just more neurologically attached than Alan Conyers, right? This is not to suggest that either Roy Jones or Alan Conyers can't live full lives. It's just a recognition that when these guys get hit, things happen to them, right? Um, you know, these guys, you know, you can have a good chin, but understand what a good chin means. A good chin means that your body is such that your entire body can take the punch, Right? You don't have a good chin if you get hit on the chin. You're mentally alert. You're still thinking, hey, I've got to beat this guy. 
and then you cannot control your legs right when you start to see that in a boxer let me just say that boxer is in trouble I think Alan Conyers is in trouble as I said I think he's toward the end of his career I'm not surprised that he took several months off after getting knocked out by James Kirkland then he took several months off in fact I believe years off after he got knocked out in his next fight I'm not surprised by that because quite frankly these devastating losses do require that you take time off let me also point out too that um, Showtime had a show fight camp 360 where they actually where uh, they they actually showed Andre Durrell when he got off the canvas now I know that that's a controversial uh, situation I know that many people feel that uh, Andre Durrell was faking it after he got knocked down by Arthur Abraham. I'm just here to tell you that on that Fight Club 360, either Andre Durrell deserves an Oscar or he was badly hurt. He could not remember what had happened. He did not know what had happened at the end of the fight. He turns to Gary Shaw and he says to Gary Shaw, Gary, I'm sorry. This is after winning the fight. Now, Durrell is very talented, obviously. He was in the Super 6 for a reason. Many people, myself included, and I picked Carl Froch, thought Durrell won that fight. But just as a gambler, I can tell you, Durrell could be fighting my next-door neighbor his next fight. I'm not going to bet on that fight. I'm going to have to see how Andre Durrell is just physiologically, just neurologically just whether he looks as good as he looked before the knockout uh, out, because knockouts are serious things and so here I know that Alan Conyers when he's hit right something detaches and um, since he's going up against the faster technician this is a little bit different than Roy Jones against Dennis Lebedev where Jones is the faster guy here Molina is the faster guy so I just don't think that the uh, neurologically challenged fighter is going to be able to deal with the younger, faster technician. Molina is going to force him to think quickly and to move quickly in the ring, and that might be asking too much. I like Molina. Um, the straddle, if you want one, is uh, Conyers, uh, who does have a punch by KO, but I expect Molina to win this fight. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. They could be about boxing. They could be about fighters you feel who have slurred speech. They could be about other fighters you feel are uh, neurologically challenged. Or they could be, um, you know, about Dwyer sucks and whatever. I don't care. But uh, all I ask is that you leave your comments for me here on YouTube and that after the fight, win, lose, or draw, you stop by and give us a post-fight report. Thanks for watching.